Now in this video, we're going to try something a little bit different, which for this channel seems to be the norm. During the making of the 12 month uh, cranberry wine tasting video, I received two comments, one from No No and one from Gamma Ray Gaming, which raised the possibility of making cranberry wine from cranberry jelly. And I figured, hey, you know what? It's Thanksgiving. Why not? So that's going to be the focus of this video. I'm going to make a cranberry sauce wine. Now to make our cranberry sauce wine, we need, of course, cranberry sauce. And for that, we cut four 14 ounce cans of whole berry cranberry sauce with no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. We're going to need up to two cups of sugar. That's 500 milliliters for you non-imperial folk, or one pound if you've got a measuring scale. We will make adjustments to the amount of sugar later on in the recipe. I'm going to be using a Red Star Premier Classique wine yeast this time around. Now, if you don't have wine yeast, you can always use the old standby. We need one black tea bag, which is going to act as our tannin substitute. We're going to need the juice of a quarter of a lemon, which is going to act as our acid blend substitute. This time around, even though I've given up using peptic enzyme, we are going to be using a peptic enzyme because it's a jellied product. And I'm not quite sure how much pectin is going to be in the uh, cranberry sauce. So if you don't have pectin enzyme, don't worry about it. I'm going to use it in this particular case. We're going to need about a gallon of water. Actually, it's going to be closer to nine cups, but let's have our gallon of water handy. We're going to need a one gallon jug, or in this particular case, a four liter jug, carboy, demijohn, take your pick, to do fermentation in. We'll need an airlock with stopper. We'll need a hydrometer so that we'll know what our starting gravity is going to be, what our ending gravity is going to be, which will tell us how much alcohol is going to be in the wine. Also, in case there's a problem with the wine, should it stop fermenting? The hydrometer is going to let us know what's going on there as well. And of course, using your sanitizer of choice, we want to make sure that all of our equipment has been properly sanitized so that we don't have any problems or hopefully won't have any problems later on down the road. We're going to take eight cups of our water and we're going to pour just a little bit into a small saucepan. And the remainder into the pot. Let's put in our black tea bag, which is acting as our tannin substitute. And let's bring that to a simmer. And the remainder of our water, let's go ahead and heat that up. We don't need it really boiling, we just need it just hot enough or warm enough to help dissolve our cranberry sauce. Now that our water has warmed up a bit, we're going to go ahead and add in our cranberries. Now at this point, I should point out that if you're using regular cranberry sauce, then you are good to go. Just simply add in your cranberries. Dissolve it in the warm water and wait for it to cool down. But if you are one of the unfortunate souls who could only find whole berry cranberry sauce, then we're going to do the same process, except we're going to we're going to mash these up a bit, and then later on we're going to strain these cranberries out. So we're going to go ahead and begin that process by adding in our cranberry sauce. And let's go ahead and get that incorporated. Now, if you had a wide mouth fermenter, then you could just put the uh, could just put the cranberries in the uh, straining bag and put the whole thing into the fermenter. But since I'm not using the wide mouth fermenter, this is going to have to do. All right. 
Make sure the stove is off. Have a quick peek at our tannin substitute, which seems to be doing okay. So we can turn the heat off that as well. And since everything is still hot, let's go ahead and add in our black tea. And let's see. Let's go ahead and cover it while it comes down to room temperature. Let's go ahead and start incorporating our sugar. I'm going to start with one cup or 250 milliliters and get that incorporated. And then take a hydrometer reading because I want to try and shoot for a reading of 1.080. Okay, it looks like I overshot my mark just by a little bit. I came in at 1.096 as my hydrometer reading. I mean, that's okay. That works. Now, the next thing I want to do, and again, this is highly optional if you don't want to use it. I'm going to be adding my peptic enzyme per the instructions on the package. And let's go ahead and incorporate that. And let's let that do its thing. Now for this next step, because I had to use whole cranberry uh, sauce, if you use regular cranberry sauce, you don't need to do this. I need to strain out all of those crushed up cranberries so I can then transfer it into the carboy. Mashing down the remaining pulp to make sure I get as much cranberry goodness out of much of this as possible. And I think that's about all I'm going to get out of that. Now this would also be a good time to go ahead and add in our lemon wedge and making sure that we strain out any seeds. Give that a quick little stir. Because the next thing we need to do is that we need to transfer it from our bowl to our carboy. After re-sanitizing all of my equipment again, let's go ahead and begin this process. However, as you can see, we're coming up just a little bit short of where we need to be to fill this. So we're going to do two things. One, we're going to go ahead and add in our yeast. And two, we're going to bring our level up quite a bit. But before we do any of that, before we add in our yeast, this is actually an excellent opportunity to go ahead and let's incorporate some oxygen into our juice which will be helpful to the yeast. Give that a real good shake. 
be mindful of the fact that it's probably the cardboard is probably going to be wet so make sure you have a good grip now the small opening such as a cardboard there's no real elegant way of doing this I mean if you're a fan of blooming your yeast you can add it in that way but otherwise this method has worked quite well for me just try to sprinkle it around there as evenly as possible. And then let's bring up our level closer to the top. That for me was three more cups, and I'm going to leave it there. Put the cap back on temporarily, and it's only because during the first, th at least the first three days, I'm going to come back and I'm going to give this a real vigorous swirl. Not too much because what might happen is that it might might release a lot of CO2 and start foaming in and out of your airlock. But just give it a good swirl just to incorporate a little bit more oxygen uh, into, the, into the mix. And what we need to do now, and then we'll come back after that, that three or five day period, and we'll go ahead and we'll bring our level up closer to the top. Let's go ahead and put on that airlock. And let's go ahead and label our creation. We are making a cranberry sauce wine. I started it on this date. And my original or starting gravity was 1.096. Now, of course, there are going to be plenty more steps to complete this wine project uh, over the course of the next several months. Uh, I'll have a link to the uh, playlist where I have uh, all of the winemaking operations that follow this in the link above. But basically, there are going to be several rackings, followed by eventually a degassing, followed by eventually a bottling, followed by eventually... And the list goes on quite a bit. But um, over time, you're going to see a layer of sediment, or at least begin to develop over the, on the bottom of your uh, carboy. And that's going to be the point in time where you're going to decide, okay, it's time to rack it or transfer it into another container and then continue to process until you feel your wine is as clear as, it's, uh, as it needs to be. So again, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe button or better yet, become a member. Help support this channel so I can continue to do more of these videos. Uh, I have links to anything that I've used here, uh, Amazon links and the uh, uh, comment and description sections below. Also, you can find the list of ingredients in the description section. And as time goes on, after we've had a chance to taste this wine, if there are any changes to the ingredients, you will find those changes listed there as well. Basically, the new, the new ingredient change followed by the word modify. So you know that uh, this recipe has been perfected a little bit more. So again, I'll see you in the next video. Okay, it's now been 12 months since we uh, started making this cranberry sauce wine. It's now ready for presentation and tasting. A couple of notes, a couple of notes, even before I, get, before I started. Uh, and I kind of wish I'd taken a picture of this, but uh, while it was in the carboy, very shortly after I racked it from primary and the secondary, there was like a two inch thick layer of sediment, not just yeast sediment, but basically just cranberry sediment that uh, somehow, I don't know, kind of oozed out of the bag or whatever, but uh, I was kind of concerned about that with regards to the amount of yield. Uh, so I decided to hold off on, on racking it a uh, subsequent time. Hopefully some of that would like compact down a bit and it, eventually it did. Uh, so I didn't lose very much in the, uh, in, in, in the overall wine. Let's see, born 11, 20, 21, ABB came in at 9.45%, and of course, it's been pasteurized. Um, did use, I did use a pectic enzyme on this one, um, and it came in fairly clear, 
quite honestly. It's a slight bit of haze, but fairly clear. Uh, it has been, uh, again, it's been, uh, it's been uh, back Sweden, but this was like several months ago. And in the interest of time, we're going to try and go ahead and crack this one open. Let's see what it tastes like now. Now, in the interest of disclosure, when I back sweeten my wine, uh, basically I'll take little three ounce Dixie cup folds of, uh, of sugar and I'll go ahead and add it into the carboy and I'll, I'll do a, I'll, I'll break out the uh, degasser whip and I'll, I'll, I'll incorporate it. But when I do the actual tasting of it, when I pour a little bit, it's just basically just barely enough to cover the bottom of the, of the cup. So I really don't know what like a full glass of this wine tastes like until now. So let's go ahead and pour us a glass. Nice, respectful glass. Uh, there is no carbonation, so it's not a sparkling wine. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, you can, you can smell the cranberries. It's not like overpowering. Neither is the alcohol, which again, to repeat, came in at 9.45%. Slight pause there because when I, do, when I start videoing, I have to open up both windows to control some of the audio. And usually that's the time when traffic will just pick that, pick that particular point in time to start going down the street. Not individually, but they'll do it in pairs, <laughs> just just to annoy me. <laughs> but anyway, here we go. What is it? What does cranberry sauce wine taste like? Hmm. It's got that uh, usual cranberry tartness. You can barely taste the alcohol. It's not. It's not a harsh cranberry taste. It's not overly tart. It's not bad. That's not actually not bad. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I like the softness that the uh, pasteurization tends to bring to um, some of these wines and meads. Uh, speaking of which, this is a cranberry mead that I started in my last video. If you're just wondering what this is here for, it's a prop, yeah, but it's also the uh, last batch that I started using fresh cranberries. Thought I'd give that a try. Um, compared to my regular cranberry uh, wine that I made earlier, before I made uh, some adjustments, uh, one of the adjustments in the original cranberry wine was uh, there was too much acidity, so I toned down the amount of uh, I toned down the amount of uh, uh, lemon juice that I was using as my acid blend substitute because we got to remember this is a channel on doing things as simplistic as possible, so we don't use a lot of the uh, additives that you'll find in most in many other winemaking channels like um, acid blend or or uh, or, or tannin or, or sulfides or did use paper enzyme in this particular case wasn't really quite sure how that was going to work out but it turned out well uh, so that was the only cheat I used well wine yeast but you could have used bread yeast and gotten the same results uh, overall did it turn out well wish the ABB was bumped up a little bit higher uh, if I ever were to do this again making sure that I'm using uh, uh, jelly uh, or, or cranberry sauce without the whole cranberries because <laughs> that, was, that was kind of a, uh, wasn't expecting the extra effort required to deal with the whole cranberries. Here I didn't mind because I, I knew what to expect. But yeah, just regular cranberry sauce, jelly without the whole cranberry sauce should work out quite well. If that's all you got or it's Thanksgiving and it's all you got left, because you bought too much of it and you got some left over, yeah, go ahead and give this a try. I think it'll turn out quite well. So again, uh, hey, if you like what you see here, please click on that subscribe and notify button. 
Uh, everything that was used in this video, there are Amazon links uh, in the comment description section below. Um, become a member, help support this channel, and uh, life will be great. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll see you in the next video.